What's up everybody? Today I'm out in the hills of northwestern Nevada and I'm going to be reviewing the Nomad 1300 Ironman 4x4 tent. So I'm going to start by opening up in real time. That way you guys can get a sense of how long it actually takes to open and close. That means no time lapse. So I'll probably have a timer put up on the screen. That way you can see how long it actually takes. So let's get started with that. All right, so it looks like I missed a little bit of the top of the tent in the framing of the video there, but it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Overall, it took about four minutes to fully set up. The longest part of setting it up is probably just putting in these poles for the rain fly. These aren't necessary if it's not raining, but I just did it to show you the maximum time that it'll take to set this tent up. But now that we have it set up, let's go through some of the things that I like and don't like about the tent. So first, as you can see, the tent does come with a telescopic ladder. This just meaning that it can be adjustable with these two latches here to any height. It also comes with these boot bags, which are very handy. You can climb the ladder and as you get into the tent, you can take your shoes off to make sure you don't get muddy shoes up inside of the tent. Now, when closed, the tent is about five feet by four feet by one feet tall. This makes for a pretty sleek design when it is closed, a lot thinner than some of the other rooftop tents my friends have, such as the Alpha Tough Stuff. 
It also weighs about 150 pounds. Now, something I do really enjoy about this tent is that it does include this pad here, which doubles as an anti-condensation pad. It's around seven feet by five feet by 2.4 inches thick. Now, being an anti-condensation pad, it does not have the most insulating properties. So I recommend bringing extra bedding if you are gonna sleep in this tent during cold weather. Now, I did specifically choose this tent because of the length of it when laying down. I am six feet four, so having a seven foot mattress is uh, very nice compared to something like the clamshell tents, which I know I would not fit in inside of the tent. Now, because I have the rain fly on, which I don't normally have on, but the last two times I've went camping, it has rained on me. There is a skylight window here. So when you're sleeping at night, you can actually look up at the stars. You do have one window on each side as well as the front windows for ventilation. And then you will also have these little pockets here, which is handy for putting whatever you need in at night, keys, wallets, cell phones, etc. So now let's get into a couple of gripes about the tent. I'm gonna insert some footage here about how the tent actually doesn't sit flush when it's closed. This leaves it at a slight slant, which is pretty bothersome just to the eye. It doesn't really have any effect on the usability of the tent, but just kind of looks a little awkward. Same with when this tent is unfolded. There's a little bit of give here. Not sure why, because I have more than adequate clearance to unfold the tent fully while I'm down here. And then finally, I'll insert some more footage here of the locking mechanism for the tent. It is these little metal teeth clamps. These are not locking clamps, which I know is a concern for some people, meaning that anybody can access your tent at any time that's not you. There's also one more gripe I have. There's this large support pole. I'm not really sure what it's for. I believe it's to make the tent more sturdy in windy conditions and make sure it doesn't lock. But it has just this, I don't know if it's sized improperly or what, this large bend. You can kind of push it up and make your tent taller. It's still in kind of a weird shape. I've actually closed the tent on accident with this inside and bent the hell out of it, but in my experience, it's not really necessary for anything yet. Something else I wanted to mention too is that you're not gonna be able to store any bedding in the tent just because of the way it already sits, kind of uneven on the roof of the tent. You're not gonna wanna put anything inside of the tent that will make that effect worse. Now, you'd think having a large box of metal and plastic on the roof would affect your fuel economy pretty drastically, it does affect it negatively, but not more than any of the other mods on my car. So originally the 4Runner is supposed to come at around 19 miles per gallon. Instantly putting 33s on it, dropped it to around 16. When I added the three inch Bilstein lift down here, it dropped it to around 15, the bumper to 14. And with the tent, it dropped it to around 12. Now these are city miles. Most of my driving is city when I'm not going off-roading, overlanding, but highway I can get around 14 to 16 still with all of the mods depending on whether I'm going up or downhill. One more note is that having 150 pounds on your roof is going to raise your center of gravity. So if you are doing a lot of actual kind of more moderate to difficult off-roading, it is going to affect the way your car feels. You are going to be a little bit more top heavy and unfortunately there's just no way around that if you're going to go with the rooftop tent. But now that I've ran through most of my my pros and cons, I am going to do a real-time teardown of the tent. So again, no time lapse, it's just going to be straight up. This is uh, going to take a little bit longer than setting up. You're going to see that most of my time is actually spent getting these little locking mechanisms that I uh, mentioned earlier to cinch the tent down. One more thing I did want to note here is that when the tent is closed, the ladder rubs on the bottom of the tent. This has caused some of the powder coating to rub off the bottom, leaving it exposed to the elements and just a different bare metal than the rest of the black powder coated metal. Also, some of the powder coating on the awning bracket has rubbed off and this leads me to have concerns about the longevity of both the awning brackets and the tent powder coat itself.
So overall, a little bit over five minutes, not too bad. The more I do it, the faster it kind of gets as you learn little tips that makes it easier to close up. I've only spent about a week or two worth of nights in the tent, so I may be doing an update video later on if I realize how to fix some of my peeves. Maybe I discover a little bit more or some more things I like about the tent. So stay tuned for that. Now, real quickly, I am going to do a real-time setup and tear down of the awning on this side. I have not used it much yet, but it is just starting to get really hot outside. So I'll probably see some more use out of it. This is the, I believe, XTR 71. Delta Wing 270 degree XTR 71 from Iron Man. On its own, it costs $900. Would I recommend it for $900? I don't really know. When it came with the tent for free, it is a pretty neat addition to have.
So that is the real time setup. I wish it was a little taller, but I guess that is just with the height of my car. If I were to post up a lawn chair right underneath it, it'd be perfectly fine. As you can see, I just hit my head there, but as it goes, there are these additional poles that can pop out from the poles here for extra stability during windy conditions. It does come with some stakes and it stays open just with a simple hook here that I latch onto kind of wherever I want on the roof rack here. Overall though, pretty nice addition to have. I have a feeling it'll come in handy with uh, sunny days coming up. Now with that being said, let's do a quick real-time teardown of it. So that is going to wrap it up for the review of the tent and the awning today. Like I said earlier, I may be making an update video as I find more things I like and dislike. If you found any of the information useful, drop a like. If you didn't, drop a dislike, just knowing that it won't do anything because YouTube removed the dislike button. If you do want to see more related content, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I have a few ideas for some more videos. I may be doing a walkthrough on some of the mods that I have in the Forerunner as well as a price breakdown of all of them. I also may break down the difference between A-Track, Multi-Terrain Select, uh, Rear Locking Differential, 4-High, four 4-Low, four etc. All the little off-roading tools that come in handy on the 4Runner. And as always, thanks for watching and until next time.